ourstudies.com, and this is the current Q&A. This month on the current Q&A, we're talking to electrical safety instructor for low voltage, Miss Delina Martinez <laughs> for powerstudies.com. Hi, Callie. Hi, Delina. Um, we've got a question for you this month. Okay. So our question is, what is a qualified person? That's a great question. The first place I would start is I would open up NFPA 70E and the article's definition for a qualified individual states it's one who has demonstrated skills and knowledge. This will be related to the construction and operation of electrical equipment and installations and has received safety training to identify and avoid the hazards involved. Interesting. So Delina, would this cover a person who is considered task qualified? Well, Callie, task qualified individuals are just that. They're qualified to perform specific tasks and it could also involve use of certain types of equipment. But just because you're task qualified does not make you low voltage qualified. How do I know if I'm low voltage qualified? As the article's definition brought out for a qualified person, it's a two-part process. So the first part of that was demonstrating skills and knowledge. And the second part was receiving safety training so that they can avoid those hazards, potential hazards. Well, Delina, you mentioned skills and knowledge. Exactly what type of skills and knowledge specifically are we looking at? Again, I would refer to the standard NFPA 70E. This time, I would go to Article 110.2D1. It has a nice breakdown of those skills and knowledge. Skills and knowledge, and again, th these are the minimum requirements. So, the first part would be proper use of PPE. This includes arc flash, shielding materials, and insulating equipment. Proper use of insulating tools and their test equipment, being able to discern precautionary techniques for working around hazards, the ability to distinguish exposed energized conductors and circuits apart from other equipment, the ability to determine nominal voltage, also understanding the required approach boundaries. This includes arc flash as well as shock approach boundaries. And then also understanding the decision-making process. NFPA 70E has a nice um, summary of what's involved with that decision-making process and that qualified individual will understand how to use that. Oh, so who determines when a person is qualified? The employer actually defines what a qualified individual is and the way they'll go about doing that is first of all they'll understand the safe work practices, they'll receive the training uh, involved with that. The other thing the employer would do for that employee is make sure that they're trained properly on their own electrical distribution equipment so that the employee can work safely and also they'll have peace of mind that they are in compliance with OSHA as well as NFPA 70E standards. Thank you so much for explaining that for us, Delina. You're welcome. Well, that was that for this month. Please join us next month for the current Q&A.